Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. That's Monday, January 13th, 2015. I'm David Knight, your host today. We have a lot of news. We have the EU not only being invaded by the consequences of our foreign policy in Syria, we also have Angela Merkel planning on a European army. That's right. We're talking about a full-on European government. We've seen this coming for quite some time. Let me just give you some of the items that we're going to cover today. Uh, Justice Breyer, Supreme Court Justice, is going to be on the Colbert uh, show tonight. I wanted to say the Colbert Report. It's the late show, David Letterman's former show. Uh, he's had a strong lineup of guests the last couple of weeks. He's going to have a Supreme Court Justice on tonight selling a book about global realities of constitutional law. Of course, he doesn't use the term constitution in it. Nowhere. And the title, here's the title, The Court and the World, American Law and the New Global Realities. We're going to talk in depth about what he has to say about that. We're also going to look at economic news this week. The Federal Reserve is going to have their Federal Open Market Committee meet on Thursday. They're going to announce whether or not they're going to raise rates, whether or not they're going to essentially nuke the world economy with a rate hike, and we're going to talk about what's behind that. Of course, we're setting new records in the United States. We have new record uh, tax revenue, still not enough to cover the expenses of our government. You understand that since the income tax and Federal Reserve were created approximately the same time, about 100 years ago, we've essentially been on interest-only payments to the Federal Reserve. This is kind of like the negative mortgage that they sell to people who are retired that don't have an income stream or they have an insufficient income stream. So they say, hey, you've got equity in your home. We'll pay you instead of you paying us. We'll pay you on a monthly basis. And then each month you lose equity in your home. Well, that's what's been going on with the United States for 100 years. Are they ready to take it over? We'll sh we shall see. But we have uh, two, well, let's see, I have to look at this. I think that's two trillion, maybe uh, it's higher than that. $2.8 trillion in federal taxes uh, set a record through August. Of course, that's only about $19,000 per worker. Federal workers make a lot more than $19,000, don't they? We all know that, especially since Obama got in office. The number of people uh, making large six-figure salaries has skyrocketed under Obama. So we've got a giant deficit, still have a $530 billion deficit. And, of course, we're dropping like a rock on economic freedom. We're now down to number 16, and it was just in 2000 that we were second on the list of economic freedom. We're going to talk about the metrics of that. Of course, we now have a leader of the party in Britain, the Labour Party in Britain, who is an avowed Marxist, and he is singing the red flag as he takes uh, the position of leader of the Labour Party in Britain. And we see Bernie Sanders moving up ahead of Hillary Clinton. I'm fine with Bernie Sanders moving ahead. At least we know where he's coming from. Hillary Clinton uh, talks like she's uh, something different. She'll, she'll talk about uh, socialist policies and everything. But she's really part of the uh, neocon globalist full-on war party. At least uh, uh, the guy who is a Marxist in Britain says that he doesn't want war. We'll see about that. We saw how... The Greek leader, who was a very leftist, very Marxist uh, leader in Greece, betrayed the people there to the bankers. We've seen that. Uh, we, we need to remember, when we look at these Marxists who say that they're going to save everybody from these rapacious capitalists. We need to understand your history. Understand that Lenin was sent by German bankers with $10 million in a gold, in a, in a sealed train, $10 million in gold to start the Russian Revolution. He was started by the central bankers, the same guys that were creating the Federal Reserve in America. Stay with us. We've got a lot of news. We've got more news about the Iran deal. Do treaties really matter? And, of course, some updates on the election. We'll be right back. I said at the top of the hour, the day was January 13th. I, it's a Freudian slip. That's my anniversary. I'm sure my wife was laughing about that. She always teases me about forgetting our anniversary. Well, I remembered it, dear, but it's uh, nine months late. Nevertheless, it's Monday, September the 13th, 2015. We have 14th. Okay, we're going to get there eventually. Um, <clears throat> it's September 14th, and it is Monday, okay? And I am David Knight, and we've got some news. Let's talk about the economic news. We now have the U.S. dropping to 16th on the economic freedom list. 
We're now behind Canada, Chile, and New Zealand, Hong Kong, many others. How do they determine this ranking? Well, one of the things that may help us is the fact that we are now getting federal record in taxes, $2.8 trillion. That's still $530 billion short, as I said in the last segment. We have been on an interest-only payment, essentially a reverse mortgage, since they created the Federal Reserve and charged us interest for every one of the pieces of paper that they create. Will the bank start to call that loan now? We'll have to see because they're going to meet this Thursday. They could very well raise interest rates, and everyone is very concerned about what that's going to do. Let's talk about some of the economic news. As I point out, we now rank 16th in the world. We were second in 2000. That's what Bush and Obama have done for us. We've been dropping like a rock. What are the variables that they use to determine this? Well, they got 42 different variables. They rank 157 different countries. One of the things that they look at is the weakened rule of law, the so-called war on terrorism and drugs. What would that be? Well, that's going to be asset forfeiture. The fact that they can just seize your property at will, never charging you with a crime, never... Uh, never arresting you, never asserting that you did anything wrong, just seizing your property, charging the property with being an accessory to an imagined crime, and then you have to sue them to try to get it back. Not very many countries have that law. I don't know any countries that do have that kind of law, except for the United States. And of course, it is in direct conflict with the Constitution. But who cares about the Constitution anymore, right? Also, a confused regulatory environment, they say, have helped to erode economic freedom in the United States, which remains behind Canada and more economically free countries like Qatar, Jordan, and the United Arab Emirates. Yeah, there we go. We're sinking to third world status. We are becoming a banana republic with nuclear weapons. That's what the United States is turning into. The top 10, the number one was Hong Kong. And I remember when we were in Hong Kong about nine years ago adopting my daughter, I looked at the money and the different uh, denominations that would look at the same denomination, same amount of money, Hong Kong dollar, and it was very different from one bill to the other. And so I started looking at it closely, and I realized these were being issued by private banks, not by a central bank. Well, that's very interesting, because that's the way we used to do it in the United States before we had a central bank. So there's other ways to do it. And if it's done by individual banks, they have to have reserves to back that up, which our banks today don't really have reserves. As a matter of fact, we have a, a uh, article up on Infowars.com. A bank in Russia was caught using fake gold as reserve capital there. And this is an article from Zero Hedge. It says, over the past several years, incidents involving fake gold, usually in the form of gold-plated tungsten, have emerged every so often, usually involving Manhattan Jewelry District or some uh, gold foundries or a bullion dealer, but never have they found it in a bank until this last Friday when Russia's Admiralty Bank, they discovered that they were using gold-plated metal as part of their gold reserves. Now, this was not a large bank. This was, they say, a relatively small bank. It was ranked number 289 in Russian banks in terms of assets. But, of course, it raises a question. If that's happening to that bank, how many other banks in Russia are doing that? And how many banks globally are doing that? Well, that's an interesting question because... Zero Hedge also has an article about Peter Hambro saying it is virtually impossible to get physical gold in London. Now, he and Ronan Manley have both, both pointed out that there's very little physical gold left in London. Here's a quote. They say, my baseline is that the Chinese have been buying and the Indians have been buying in enormous quantities, and it is virtually impossible to get physical gold. They can pass the little bits of paper around. It also... Makes us think back to several articles over the last couple of years. Remember, Germany, other countries have said that they want to repatriate the gold from the New York Federal Reserve. They said, uh, yeah, OK, uh, give us several years to do that. <laughs> they put them off. It almost makes you wonder whether they've got that uh, in their reserves at the Federal Reserve as well. We also have Texas that is trying to uh, get its gold back from New York. Uh, we haven't gotten it back yet. The only state that has done some, and I think this is very interesting, other states should try to do this as well. They're talking about setting up a gold repository here in Texas where we would hold our own physical gold and people could deposit gold there as well and draw against it. 
That's what's going to have to happen. We're going to have to have honest money that we can trust. And we don't have that right now. Because we have a Federal Reserve System that can raise and lower interest rates at will. That's what they've been doing for 100 years. That's what we were warned about when they created them. Many people spoke out about it. Many congressmen and senators at the time. Uh, Lindbergh's father was um, in Congress, and he said, had a famous quote, talking about how with the control of interest rates, with the control of money supply, they could create boom and bust cycles at will. They could make fortunes by shorting the market, by uh, buying into the market before it goes up. They could time economic boom and bust cycles and create those cycles. Now, Zero Hedge points out that in the 110 months since the last Fed hike, this is over the last several years, global central banks have cut interest rates 697 times. Hear that? They've cut interest rates 697 times collectively, the central banks. Now we have brought in $15 trillion of financial assets. So they're just created out of nowhere. Zero or negative interest rate policies have been adopted throughout the West and Asia, U.S., Europe, Japan. And following the great financial crisis of 2008, he says both stocks and corporate bonds have soared to an all-time high, thanks in great part to the extraordinary monetary regime there we go that's what they have done and of course if you remember what happened with the bubble that burst in 2007 2008 that followed a long period of, of a rope-a-dope move by the federal reserve by alan greenspan lowering interest rates consecutively i i forget how many times it was it was like a dozens of times they had lowered interest rates and then they changed it and they continued to raise interest rates, raise interest rates, raise interest rates until it imploded. Now they're looking at possibly doing it uh, this week. And of course, if they do it, uh, it's going to have a tremendous impact. That's what people are talking about. They say U.S. interest rates could trigger a global debt crisis. This is the uh, U.K.'s telegraph. They say debt ratios have reached extreme levels across all major regions of the global economy, leaving the financial system acutely vulnerable to monetary tightening by the U.S. Federal Reserve. The world's top financial watchdog has warned. And, of course, many financial analysts, uh, some biblical prophecy people, have pointed out that they're very concerned about a repeating pattern, a timing pattern. People look at market timing who analyze data. People who look at biblical prophecies are all pointed to September as being the time that there might be some kind of a massive economic correction. And, of course, that could all be triggered. The, the the pen that burst the bubble could be the change in interest rates. It could be something else. But, of course, it is interest rates themselves that have triggered this financial bubble in the stock market. Most of this money that has been loaned out at 0%. And, and let me say this, too. When they say that the banks that were bailed out, they say, well, we paid all that back. We paid all that back. You know, they paid it back with money that they got at 0% interest. How hard is that to do? You and I get money at 0% interest. When you look at interest rates, even though interest rates are relatively low for uh, durable goods like uh, homes and automobiles and that sort of thing, they're incredibly high, of course, for credit card debt. We're looking at 15, 25, and if you get delinquent, it goes sky's the limit on your interest rates. It wasn't until the stagflation of Jimmy Carter that they took off the legal requirement that interest rates stay below 10%. It was considered to be usury if they took interest rates above 10%. Now that's the norm for anything that is unsecured. But of course, they get the money at 0%. What's the return if you get money at 0% and you loan it out on a car loan at even, let's say, 2 or 3%, a really good car loan, you got great credit, and they loan it out to you 2 or 3%. They get it for 0%. They loan it out for 2 or 3%. You know, when you divide by zero, what do you get? Infinite. Infinite. Okay? They've never seen the kind of returns on investment that the banks are getting now with these 0% interest rates. It's worse than what the mob used to do. Usury, loan sharking, that used to be the territory of the mob. But, of course, the banks are very indistinguishable from the mob anymore. The large banks we're talking about. Of course, we've had them laundering money for drug cartels.